Annie Leonhardt, one of the 10 graduating scouts from Attack on Titan, but more importantly, a warrior. Annie sneaked in with the warrior trio after Wall Maria fell. You even got a glimpse of her in episode 2. Annie took the opportunity to join the military police when she was 16 years old. At that time, Annie was exactly 5 feet tall, or 153 centimeters. She also weighed 119 pounds or 54 kilograms. At this time, Annie should be 20 years old, although she may or may not be in a Sleeping Beauty state. The author, Mystery Sayama, has revealed that Annie's character's design comes from Avril Lavigne. Annie's hairstyle is even based off a paparazzi shot of her. Mr. Isayama also revealed that Annie's name is supposed to be a joke. What he means is that Annie's a girl, yet her name is Ani, this being the Japanese word meaning brother. The name Annie is also from a drama he likes, Kisara's Cat's Eye. As for Leonhardt, he gave her Leonhardt to show her inner strength. He thought the name seemed edgy and cool, so it'd be perfect to combine them together. Depending on where you watch Attack on Titan for the first time, you may have missed one of Annie's important scenes. This was a scene during the second Trost battle where Eren was supposed to be plugging up that hole. Take a look. Annie went out of her way to stop that incoming Titan out of the way. She totally saved Jeans' ass. If you've only seen the TV version, you missed out on Annie's badass save. So what happened here? Apparently, the Attack on Titan Season 1 production was a total mess. This scene was not yet finished by the time that the episode was supposed to go live. Later on when the Blu-ray release came around, the studio had a chance to make quite a few upgrades. This included finishing this intended scene. The voice behind the blonde warrior Annie is Yu Shimamura. Let me know if you recognize any of her past work. She's voiced Mizuki from Alderaan Zero, Akiko from Bungo Stray Dogs, Hare from Guilty Crown, Shinobu from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Suine, also known as that Undine healer from the Sleepy Nights in SAO, and also Mito from Seraphroth of the End. As for non-anime roles, there's Ailita from Koli Yoko, and also Blake from the Japanese dub of Ruby. Yu has also done video games. She's voiced Ibi from the Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Cindy from Final Fantasy XV. She's even voiced Princess Zelda from The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Skyward Sword. That's just pretty awesome. Annie may be 5 feet tall, but she packs quite the kick. You've seen Annie take this upright stance with arms extended. This is known as a traditional Muay Thai stance. This is a Thai kickboxing martial art, with an emphasis on the 8 limbs of fists, elbows, knees, and shins. Mr. Isayama is a well-known fan of MMA, so naturally, a real martial art technique is displayed by Annie. Annie's stance makes it much easier to raise her legs for throws or launching kicks. Interestingly, the anime cut a scene between Eren and Annie related to this. You saw how easily Annie was able to take down the inexperienced Eren in the anime. Later on, Annie got fond of Eren and even offered to teach Eren her technique. Of course, Eren got scared at just the thought of this. Perhaps the scene got removed due to lack of time. Or instead, it might have made the female titan identity way too obvious. During the final part of Attack on Titan Season 1, you saw Annie thinking back to her father. There's a lot of mystery around this scene, so let me fill in some of the gaps. Long before Annie set out on her mission, she was constantly training every day. Annie's father told her that her purpose in life was to complete her mission. Annie will wake up before dawn to practice her hand-to-hand -hand combat until sunset. Rest was not allowed. Deep down, Annie thought it was stupid, but she couldn't oppose her father. She gave him absolute obedience. One day, Annie finally snapped. She kicked her father in the face. She had enough. Annie continued to kick her father's body while he was on the ground. She kicked as hard as she possibly could. Annie's father walked with a limp ever since that day. To Annie's surprise, her father was not pissed. He actually praised her. He was glad to see that her kick had improved that much. She told Annie that she could get stronger. So he then imposed even stricter training on her since that day. Annie never disobeyed her father again. The finale of Attack on Titan Season 1 ended with the rematch between the female titan and the berserk titan. If you compare the anime to the manga version, it really is like night and day. 
From my video about Eren, you heard about how they made him look way better in the anime. The fight originally was one-sided, in favor of Annie. Naturally, Annie's final moment was also quite different. The anime showed this weird scene that looked like Annie and Eren's titan were merging. This actually never happened. In the manga, Annie crystallized herself in the final moments before the Surrey Corps pulled her out of the titan. Before all of this, there was also another major change. I'm talking about the scene where Annie finally lets it all out. This is one of the specific changes that Isayama personally requested. He mentioned how he felt that Annie's face was made too scary in the manga, and he personally thought this scene was a complete failure on his part. Instead of Annie giving off that creepy smile, he wanted Annie to express her sense of release from all her feelings of guilt, fear, and loneliness with that laugh. At that moment, Annie laughing was a true Annie being let out. The initial plan to capture Annie ultimately failed due to the ace up her sleeve. I don't want to go around pointing fingers, but in hindsight, this could have been avoided. The Lost Girl story gives you this interesting interaction between Mikasa and Annie. Annie was on kitchen duty one day. Mikasa showed up to visit Annie to return a certain ring she found. She does question Annie about the concealed blade. Annie goes ahead and makes up some story about having received it from her parents. It'd be something completely useless in case of an emergency, but she considers it a good luck charm. Mikasa didn't really buy her story. She even questions Annie why she wanted to join the military police. Annie went ahead and made up some other excuse, but Mikasa thought that Annie was hiding something. After this interaction, Annie made it clear that she was cautious of Mikasa, and she preferred to avoid her. Funny how things turned out in the end. On the day before she killed off Levi's squad and several other scouts, what was Annie up to? Annie was actually pretty busy that previous day. She went through the trouble of securing a sick day, so it wouldn't be suspicious when she skipped work. Her roommate agreed to cover for her, but only for a favor. This is why Annie spent her day trying to solve this missing girl's case. It involved Annie going to the shady part of town, which of course had her kicking some tail. She even got to demonstrate her kicks. It really ended up being a warm-up for the next day. Although, it wasn't all fun and games. Annie almost got herself killed. She was captured at one point by two men and even shot in the stomach. Good thing for her healing factor. Otherwise, it would have been game over for her right there and then. Annie was forced to resort to her female titan powers to get out of that sticky situation and escape. At the end of all of this, you even got to see Annie's huge love of donuts. Yummy. After this little adventure, Annie was completely mentally prepared to do whatever it took to complete her next mission. Annie's Titan form is known as a female Titan. The Japanese name is the Megata no Kyojin. This more accurately means the female type Titan. Annie's female Titan, by the way, is 14 meters tall, slightly smaller than the armored and Eren's Titan. As for Annie's female titan abilities, you've seen that she's able to crystallize or harden certain parts of her body at will. This ability actually is not unique to the female titan. Several other titans have been shown to be able to harden in some way. It has also been revealed that this power has been given to her. You've also seen Annie's ability to regenerate quickly during the battle in the titan forest. So far only Eren and her have demonstrated this ability to heal this rapidly. But wait, does Annie not have anything special to her titan? Well, her titan is the only specific female type, which is interesting. Her titan is also supposed to have high mobility and endurance. It makes her pretty capable, being an all-purpose fighter. It also has been confirmed that the female titan scream used to draw in mindless titan is unique to her. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about that precious healing factor while in human form. Pretty handy. Let's now delve deeper into Annie. What made Annie into the warrior she is today? This is getting into some deep spoiler territory for Attack on Titan. Annie was born in a nation far outside the walls called Marley. She grew up being trained ever since she was young. Annie was one of eight kids selected for the nation's special warrior program. This selection was how Annie inherited the powers of the female Titan. Before they ever got sent to the walls, Annie and the other titans had already used their power to take down a whole nation on their own. Annie and the others were pretty much brainwashed by propaganda since birth. 
They believed that the people living within the walls were evil devil creatures. Even her father continuously reminded her that her only purpose in life was to fulfill her mission. As for that special mission, you know what the Colossal and Armor Titan were doing on that day. But what about Annie? Annie's role was to gather all the Titans outside of the walls and lead them towards Wall Maria. This way, as soon as a hole was made, Titans would instantly begin flooding inside. In the end, it really comes down to Annie being a little kid born into a very unfortunate situation. Although you gotta give her some credit, Annie did voice her hatred against Marley on the day of that mission. She pretty much said, fuck Marley, frack them all. Despite all that brainwashing, Annie was able to see through it, even as a little kid. Unfortunately, it might be too late. Annie has already killed countless, directly and indirectly as a female titan. The curse from taking the female titan powers is also ticking. Annie will die 13 years after inheriting those powers. Perhaps this helps explain the mindset of Annie. She doesn't seem to have any goals or desires of her own, outside of returning to her father. In Lost Girls, Annie mentions how she doesn't know anything, doesn't know why she got sent on this mission, doesn't know why she must kill, and doesn't know if she'll be allowed to live when she returns. Annie sees her life as a combination of things she does not know. Annie truly is a lost girl. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please give this a colossal thumbs up for Annie and subscribe if you enjoyed, especially if Annie is your favorite. Fun question of the day today. There's always been this rivalry between Mikasa and Annie, so which lost girl do you like more, Annie or Mikasa, and why? Also, do you have a special shipping in mind for Annie? She can't stay inside that crystal forever. By the way, do leave your pick for anime or character you want to see next time. Subscribe so you don't miss it, check out the past attack on Titan Facts videos, and I'll see you guys later.